I get tired of rich people talking to people and they make you buy these programs and stuff so they can drag you out for eight years. You can get the program. I have asked God for some tremendous stuff. Everything he hasn't given to me is on the way. I have no doubt about it. Why would he not? When I was homeless, I lived in a car for three years. I made some decisions in my life, man, and threw myself off a cliff. My decision in October, uh, October 8th, 1985, I walked into a comedy club for the first time on a dare from a girl. I walked into a comedy club for the first time. Had never heard of a comedy club. All my life, I wanted to be on TV. Had never heard of a comedy club. October the 8th, I walked into Hilarity's Comedy Club in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. It's right outside there. I signed up for the following week because I just wanted to see what the comedians did. Man, I wanted, I was saw stand, live stand-up for the first time. They had 10 acts supposed to go up. Nine of them went up. The 10th guy got scared and went ran out the door. So I had signed up for the following week. The guy says, listen, we lost our 10th act. We're going to go to the phones. We're going to go to the week from next week. If Steve Harvey's here, come on up now. So I ran up on stage. I'm doing, I don't even know what to do, but I just started talking about boxing and stuff that happened to me. Audience was hollering, laughing. They brought all 10 of us back up on stage. They had a clap off. I won the clap off. I won $50. I cried from Cuyahoga Falls to Cleveland. The girl kept saying, why are you crying? It ain't but $50. I said, no, nah, you don't understand. It's way more than 50 This is what I do. She said, what you mean this is what you do? This is just your first time. Uh, you don't understand. Something happened to me. I won amateur night. I went to work the next day, October 9th, 1985, and quit my job. Now, I don't recommend that you do it that way. Because two years later, I was homeless. Because <laughs> the first year of comedy, I made $3,400. The next year, I made $4,800. And the third year, I made $5,300. I got a wife, a set of twins. I'm sending every dollar I got to them. So I tried to live on $50, $75 a week. Gas was $0.38 cent a gallon back then. I just stayed in my car. So I lived in my car for three years three years I lived in my car and what happened was I just said man so I used to fish all the time to eat because I'm a fisherman I'm a bass fisherman so I used to stop at lakes and ponds and just fish and every night every month I get run off from somebody's land hey get away from here hey move along that's not yours hey stop fishing here I just get run off and he didn't understand. And one time I had fish on the line. They said, you got fish on that line? I said, yeah, throw them back. I had to throw them back because I used to stop at rest areas with them little cast iron grills. I kept charcoal in my car. I started a fire and I eat fish. There's some days I wouldn't eat. So that, they thought I was just fishing, but I was eating. So I said one day, I said, man, you know what? One day, man, I'm going I'm to I'm give myself some land. I'm going to buy myself a piece of dirt. So fast forward, God bless me. I get on TV when I'm 38. I'm on Showtime at the Apollo. Lord, have mercy. They gave me my money. I saved my money up. I saved $250,000. I said, I'm going to give me some land. I went to Texas. And I'm about to buy some land. But before I went to buy the land, I was curious. I just had the thought. I said, man, I wonder how much land is on earth? How, how many acres is on earth because you know it's not going to change you know God lets you fly God lets you dive on the water God don't let you make dirt can't make dirt so I looked it up it's roughly over just a little bit over 36 billion acres of land 36 billion acres of land so I just got a little bit more curious and I said well how many people on earth I looked it up and there's about six billion people on earth. So I did some Steve Harvey thinking. I said, okay, if it's 36 billion acres of land 
and it's about six billion people on earth. Everybody ought to have six acres of land. Not just me. You know? So I asked God, could I have six acres? That's all I wanted. Because you know the one thing I wanted? I didn't care if I put a house on it or nothing. I just wanted to be a stand somewhere and couldn't nobody run me off. I got this money, man. I saved my money. I saved $250,000. I'm going and I'm looking for some land. The first day I get there, I see a piece of land in Texas. So beautiful. I couldn't believe it. It had rolling hills. had a pond on it. Where I could fish. I, the dude took me over there. I look at the land and I'm, and I'm looking at I said, man, this is great right here. I said, sir, how much is this right here? He said, well, it's about $600,000. I said, man, I ain't, I ain't got that kind of money. He said, well, how much do you have? I said, I got $250,000. I said, well, let me think about it, man. He said, let me think about it. And I was standing there, and then I stopped. I said, sir, can I ask you a question, man? How many acres of land is that? He said, this is six acres. Six. Six years ago, I just asked God, just give me six. See, I didn't want a whole lot of acres. I just wanted my cut. Just give me my six. And so I said, ain't this crazy? So I thought about it. I said, man, what can we work out? Right before I got ready to say it, the guy that took me over there said, Steve, let me show you something right quick. He took me over this hillbilly's house. Took me over this hillbilly house named Jerry Campbell. I was a little nervous about meeting him, man, because I didn't like the way he talked. But mess around turned out to be one of the finest men I ever met in my life. Became a father figure to me. This old white man. He took me to his house. He said...
of me showed me this land and it was massive. It had three lakes on it. It had rolling hills. It had trees. It was unbelievable, man. I said, man, this is incredible. I said, man, how much is this? He said, this 16 acres. I said, hey, man, I ain't got that kind of money. Let me go on back over here to this dude where I can, Mike can cut a deal. He said, well, let me ask him, what was you going to give that man over there? I said, well, I hadn't worked it out yet because all I got is $250,000. He said, well, listen, I'm in a little bit of a tight right now. He said, if you can bring me 250000 cash by tomorrow, I'll give you this 16 acres. Next thing you know, I had 270 acres of land. Now, let me tell you something. I'm so busy now, I don't even get to go to that ranch. I never can go. And I thought I was going to be fishing and save it for my kids the rest of life. But God had another plan for me. That's the ranch that I have my mentoring camp on. I bring a thousand black boys out there with a thousand single mothers. And that was the purpose of that ranch. I never go there to fish at all. But see, that's what I wanted. I thought that's what it was for. But God got another plan. His way is way bigger than yours. You can't even see his way. But you got to start to hustle. You got to give God something to work with. Look, if you start hustling and grinding, he'll fill it up for you. But if you ain't got no hustle and no grind, he can't fill it up. So guess what? I don't ever go there to use that land for fishing or not. But I'm changing boys' lives over there. My story is really a story about faith. It really is, man. I come out the dirt. I have no college degree. All of my children do. I got seven kids. I sent their last one of them to college. I made sure all my kids went to college because I know they got to have that education. Well, Daddy, you didn't go to college. Well, your ass ain't got no jokes. It's been important for me to empower my children, but not only my children, but thousands of young people across the country. And education is the key for a lot of people. But when I speak at colleges and stuff, I tell people, number one thing in your world is not your education. It's your dream. So what you dreaming about, y'all? What you still dreaming about? What is God still showing you in your imagination? What are you so afraid of? Why would you not take that leap and go for it before you mess around and die? Why would you not go and see what God really got for you? Before you leave this world. Why would you hang on to a job. 